God's beauty is all around us and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello and welcome to Painting Journeys. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch and uh, we are going to be uh, doing a wonderful still life today, a Christmas still life. But first of all, I want to talk about the last painting that I did on our last episode. This is Home for the Holidays. And if you'll remember on the last episode, it wasn't nearly done, but I had explained I was going to do it out of my imagination and my memory. And so here it is. And it gives me the feeling that I have just pulled in the driveway. It's been a long, snowy drive and hours to get there, but I finally have arrived home and the lights are on and the Christmas tree is lit. It's glittering on the snow with the headlights of my car and I know they're all in there and they're waiting for me. Isn't that a wonderful feeling, a wonderful thought? It is, it truly is. I. Like I was saying, I did this totally from my imagination and memory of years ago when I used to go home for the holidays. So without further ado, you're watching Painting Journeys, and my, my name is Kitty Lynn Klisch, and we better get started with what we're going to do today. We are going to paint a poinsettia. And later on, I'm going to tell you the legend of the poinsettia. I think you'll find it very interesting. Anyway, so this is my setup. You never get to see me work from life. And I thought, what better, what better time than the holidays to see an actual live poinsettia plant and see me, how I'm going to handle that. Now, it really, I must tell you, getting down to the technical part of it, I must tell you that it really, the canvas really should be standing up because as I measure it, it is, oh, just as wide as it is tall, my, um, my, my composition here that I'm going to be painting. So I'm going to have to do a little shortening or a little lengthening or something to make the adjustments, to make it work on a canvas that is shaped like this. And the reason I always use this size in shaped canvas is because, or most always, is because it fits the screen so that you can get a better picture. And I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. So uh, first of all, I, I think I'm just gonna mass in where I see um, some color. And that is gonna be right over in this corner here. Now I'm not doing much. I'm just kind of like, I want to just kind of get a little placement. I wish I would have put some of my stuff out here. Okay, and then this, this is gonna be down in there. That's that plant. And then this big plant is going to be coming up in here and around there. And then there'll be a big flower right in here and it's gonna just go right off. I don't really know how this is going to work. This is gonna be one of those deals where, you know, it might work, it might not. Um, and if it doesn't, then I'll have to take it home and readjust it and bring it back and show it to you next time and show you what I did to change it. But I'm gonna make this poinsettia looking like it's in a very, low squat uh, looking pot in order for it to look like it is sitting on this table nicely. Back over here, I have some, some a little bit of, um, of um, evergreen. It's going back off and so that's going to be back there. And then of course, we have lots of evergreen down in here. And I'm just kind of scribbling this in. I wish that you could have seen me last week. I was at a gallery and um, I was doing a portrait of Santa. 
um, Santa Claus as he was waving out the window at all the children. And that, that was so neat to see those, those little, little ones, how excited they got and how excited they got to see me actually painting Santa's portrait. I was dressed all in red and I had a white collar on. And so they all called me Mrs. Santa, of which was kind of a hoot. I got a big kick out of that. So anyway, now we're gonna just make this like a, instead of a tall vase, as I said, we're gonna just kinda make that sit down in there like it's a, a little shorter squatter type thing, okay? And we do have, I see, a nice big green leaf coming out over in here. And you see, I'm just kinda, sketching it in, just uh, feeling my way, getting my bearings. I do have a, a, a little pine cone in here and I want to be sure and show him and, and another little pine cone back in here and right there. And then this is all pretty filled with green leaves as I'm looking at it coming down. Okay, now I think that's going to cover the the um, the canvas pretty good. Uh, I think that's going to be a nice composition. I have all, mostly my flowers in here, and with lots of greenery, and there'll be more greenery coming. There's a flower right here that is hidden, and that it, there will have a a green leaf over it actually, and then I'll have all these. Uh, bright red ones going right off the canvas and right off over here. So what's going to balance that is this red poinsettia right here, the one flower in the corner right here. So that will balance the weight of this coming off over here. Um, yeah, I think this is going to work. I think I'm going to like it a lot. Now, okay, and then this greenery. I want to bring this greenery, turn it a little bit so that it looks like it's coming back in, okay? And the reason for that is because you don't want things that are pointing out of the canvas. You want the things to, um, to flow around and keep the eye in the canvas. You don't want things pointing out. So right now we'll have heavy flowers, we'll come down with the leaves, then the this greenery down here will catch our eye, it'll bring us over here, the flower will draw us up, and that will pull us back into the, the greenery that's behind of which is pointing back towards the flower. This is going to be my focal area, and I think I better start painting. So what do you think, huh? Nothing to it, that just, just do it. That's what works. All right. I think I'm going to, um, I, I, here in the studio, I have a beautiful, soft, grayed, yellow, grayed uh, color behind uh, the poinsettia. And I think that's what I'm going to, what I see, I think is what I'm going to put back there. I think that would be lovely. It's soft. It's, it's really a pretty color. You know, kind of a, I don't know what color that would be, but it, it, it is very pretty. It is kind of a gray green, and I, I have a very limited palette today. I have mostly reds, a couple of greens, a blue, and a Payne's gray. A couple different yellows, whoops, my yellow is slipping, and lots of white, of course. I want to make the background quite light on this. Um, I usually tend to be uh, uh, the type of painter that goes more towards the dark and dramatic, and I, I don't want to. I don't want this to be too, um, too terribly dark today. I want it to be. Able, in fact, I'm going to actually lighten up the wall a little bit. What I'm seeing there um, for the background. I. I I'll probably go back in and change it because I, I probably won't like it once I do it, but we'll give it a try. You never know unless you try, right? Right. Okay. All right. This is not that great a looking color, kids, but 
maybe a little bit of blue in it. There we go. Oh, that's looking better. All right. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're just going to kind of splash this around on the back. Listen to me. I sound like I'm painting in watercolor. I'm going to splash it around. This stuff is like whipped cream. It's not like watercolor. In fact, it's even stiffer than whipped cream. I would say this is like butter. There we go. Find the magic brush. Is there such a thing? I don't think so. I think the magic comes in the prayer you say before you start the painting. I know I always say a little prayer. It's the best thing to do. Much better chance of it working. Oh, I think that matches pretty good. What do you think? Ah, let's see here. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but I do have new glasses on, and I hope everybody likes them. I talked to one of my friends, one of my artist friends, and he said, Kitty, whatever you do, don't wear those on your show. And I thought, mm, I think I'll leave it up to the viewers. I like them. I hope you do too. Enough of that personal stuff. Alrighty, that's working. It's working it. Put some down and around in here. We're going to be painting over that, but I just want to have just a little bit in there, just, just in case. A little back in there. <laughs> You're probably thinking, whatever in the world is she doing? How is she going to fix that one? Pull that one out. It'll be okay. All righty, let's see here. Now I think we will scrub in the pot. And... My pot is actually a really dark green, and my table is kind of a brighter green. Um, maybe I will use some of that. Maybe I'll put a little bit of that table on there. I, I have just a nice, you can't see it from the camera, but I can see it from where I'm standing. I have this really nice, bright green right in there where that table is coming. Very bright and pretty, of which is going to give us a little bit of depth. Yeah, okay. And then we'll have a little bit down here on the corner, right here in the foreground. And we'll have it go like that. And then we'll go into a darker green. And that'll come down right in here. And then we're going to have the wall behind it. And that's just a little bit bluer down below because it's in a little bit of shadow. Maybe we'll make that a little bit darker. There we go. Okay. Little corner there. Now I think that I like that um, red in that green for the vase. I don't, uh, or for the pot. Maybe like a little bit of the background in there and the pot is pretty hidden there I like that I'm gonna be coming back over this with leaves and things like that but that's pretty good 
put a little blue in there where the where the dark is. There we go. Shape that a little bit, a little bit underneath here. Now you see I have this greenery that's going to be popping up over that. So that's why I don't have to worry too much about what this looks like here. I do want a little bit of a light edge to strike right there. I'm planning, I'm planning ahead um, for finish. I shouldn't be, probably be doing that just yet, but I am because I like to jump all over the place. This is a little darker up in here because we have the green. There we go. Now we'll just take a little bit of red and put right in here. There we go. That gives it a little bit of roundness. There. There's a cute little pot. And now the leaves that are coming down. Um, let me see here. I better go to the what's underneath back in here. It's dark on the tabletop. Okay. That is dark. This up here is quite light. In the background because the light is coming from that kind of backlit back there. Okay. Let's hit that again. Alrighty. Now we've got this green tabletop right in here. It's even a little bit darker right under here. See, we have to have what is underneath the things that we're going to put on top. We have to sort of have them in there suggested. Um, otherwise, it's not going to uh, the light of the objects that we're going to put on top are not going to show up. So we have to have those dark shadows down there before. Now I'm seeing lots of, there's going to be lots of greenery. And even under here, underneath my poinsettia, it's going to be quite dark. Dark under here. Okay, now. Now we'll start putting on some nice dark leaves. Point, on the poinsettia plant, a lot of the, of the leaves are uh, a rather uh, blue green rather than um, rather than um, a light green uh, or a um, yellow green okay there's a leaf Now we have one over here that is a little bit brighter and it's caught in the light a little bit more. So it's going to be a little bit more like this and then it's going to be darker again. Alrighty. 
Um, we have a nice big leaf coming right in here. And this side of it is lighter. And then this side is in the shadow and is quite dark. Now we're going to lighten that up just a wee bit here to make that pop just a little bit more for you. I want this to pop just a little bit more too. Um, this leaf against that one. We've got to be able to see that. It should be dark against light and light against dark. I'm going to come back in here and darken that just a wee bit so that you can see that leaf better. There we go. All right, that's much better. Mm-hmm. Okay, this one here. And he's coming out of here, and there's red around him now. All right. Um, I think when you're working with the red and the green, it can be quite difficult because they're both colors that want to pick up uh, each other. And so it's quite easy to drag red into your green and make mud because the one is the complement of the other. Um, now this leaf here that's coming out right here, okay, it's where it's in the light, it's quite bright. But then when it goes back up in uh, underneath here, it's dark. You see that? And just that little tip is in the light. And we'll make that little tip show up even more. There we go. Maybe we'll do a little bit of light right here. And that will lift him up. Mm -hmm. OK. And let me see here. We've got kind of a greenish looking leaf. You can't make all your leaves the same. And you don't want to make them all going the same way. So here's a, a darker leaf that is coming right from back here. And he's going up this way. In fact, we don't even see all of him. Because on top of him, there's a nice big leaf that is quite bright where the light is backlit. And the light, so the light is behind it. And it's very light. In fact, I'm going to I want to lighten that just a wee bit more even cuz we can really see through here. Being a little more careful now. And then on the bottom side, it's quite dark because he's sort of folded up. He's good sized. Poinsettia leaves are good sized. What's so interesting about them is that it's the poinsettia leaf that actually turns into the flower. Okay, now 
I think we've got some pretty good leaves established. There's another one back in here. Just a little guy. See? He's coming from underneath those flowers. There's some very dark back in here, right up in there, very dark. Okay, now I think we'll start putting those flowers on. Let's see here, let's get a little background right in here, whoops, not the right color. Where's my dirty brush? Okay, let's see here. I think I want, there, that's what I want in there. And it's lighter and brighter because it is backlit. That's that light area that I'm seeing behind. I want to tell you the legend of the poinsettia plant. How it got its name. And I can't pronounce it in Spanish. But it's a legend from that took its roots in Mexico. And as the legend goes, a, all of the um, villages, the villagers would, on Christmas Eve, would bring a little gift to the baby Jesus and lay it, you know, in the creche or nativity scene, however you're used to hearing it. And the bring various things, being poor peasants, they usually didn't have much, but they would bring what they had and they would leave it at the uh, manger for the Christ child. And there was one young boy who had, he was so poor, he had nothing. And the closer he got to the church, you know, the more upset he became. And he finally dropped down in the snow and he prayed to God to give him something, to bring him a gift for the Christ child. And there in the snow, immediately, a brilliant red flower appeared. And the, it was a miracle. And the boy picked it up. He knew that was the answer to his prayer. He picked it up and took it into the church and I don't know how to say flower in Spanish, but it became the flower of the night, and the flower de noche, uh, or noche, however you say it. And so that is the legend of the poinsettia. And I think it's a beautiful legend. There's many legends out there at Christmas time, but I think that one is particularly beautiful. And so every year, no matter when, whether it's on the show, on painting journeys, or in my studio, or for a client, a commission piece, I always paint a poinsettia. We have to have poinsettias. And 
They're very important flowers to me. Okay, I'm going to come out here. And I think what I'm just going to do here is block this in. And then I'm going to pull out flowers, flower petals. I will do better than uh, if I do that rather than um, painting them one at a time. I, I don't like to do that. It gets too picky and too too busy. So we're just blocking this all in now. And hidden back underneath here is a, a, a poinsettia that has a flower that has um, leaves on top of it. See, when I do this, you really get a chance to enjoy the, the color and you get a better chance of what's going to see what, what is actually going on rather than watching the development of one petal after another. That's not good. Okay. When I get done with this, it will look like poinsettias. We will probably have to wipe out some of the centers, but that's okay. It's starting to look like poinsettia. I need some darks in here. I'm going to come with my blue and my Payne's gray, and I'm gonna come in here and separate. Whoops, I didn't like that Payne's gray. I just keep it with the blue. Um, separate some of these areas here um, a little bit to break them up and show the, the shadows and um, okay and this here I know right now I'm going to bring a nice big bright petal right here I can't resist I see that spot and it tells me that's what I want right there. Okay, now we'll put a little bit of the dark back behind in here and in here, over in here. We're gonna be picking flowers out, flower petals out from there, but we're, this is, this is um, giving us the impression of a very extremely impressionistic application of poinsettias. I'm going to put more green leaves in here. Over here, we have that big green leaf. We need another one. Where's my green brush? Here it is. Now, remembering what I said about the light against the dark, okay, this one here, if he's going to be there, he's going to have to be darker so that he can be behind. The other two this one and this one, of which means that I have to go back over and catch the edge of this and make a new, a new edge on that petal. Same way on the top so that he is on top of the one that is down underneath. And that's how you get it to look like Something's in back and something's in front. Okay. Here, mm, I'm kind of liking the shape of this. I don't know that I want to add leaves there. I think I'll just come in and with the background, put the background in there. Yeah, I kind of like that. little separation there. 
And then we can come back down and make this just a little bit softer so that it looks like it's a little further back in there. There we go. I like that. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's get some of that greenery on there. Now I'm just going to kind of scumble that in there again. And I'm going to have to come back with my background um, behind there. I don't have enough on. So we'll just come into this with the background. And that'll create a little shadow, and that'll be lovely. That's OK, too. You know, that's a marvelous thing about painting in oils, because you know, if, you, if you want to make a little, have a little color echoed in the background someplace, or make it look like there could be a little shadow there, it's perfectly OK. You know, I mean, who's to say? You're the artist. Do what you want. That's what you need to do, is what you want to do. There. OK. Now when I come in there and I put that other thing on, the little business that is, is there, that's going to be quite nice. Now I need, let me see here. Don't get too confident, kitty. All right, what color is that tablecloth over there? It's the dark green. So underneath here, we're going to need that dark green because that's where the tablecloth is peeking through at us. Mm -hmm. OK. Peeking through. All right. Now. Let me go back to that. Piece of greenery there. It's not dark enough, is it? Nope. We have to put the dark in before we can put the light on. Now this is this looks nice because it's a different color green. See, we're introducing a different color on there, and that's that's important. that to curve a little bit. Remember I talked about it curving? Okay, and just, just a little bit, just a little suggestion of it. We'll let it go off over here, and then we'll pull it back in. There, okay. Nothing is, nothing is too uh, strong at this point. Um, we're just, it's more of a suggested a feeling, more of an um, interpretation of, of, you know, how you want it to look. I'm not, I barely glance at my subject because I have something going in my mind that as the artist I see. And that's what I want to portray, not a photograph of what is in front of me because I don't think that's interesting. And it, not only that, but it's not alive. My imagination, my thought process, that's alive, that's living. This is all inanimate. Um, I have to, it's like putty. 
can take it and mold it and make it how I want it to be. Okay. Now for a nice, where's that red brush? Hmm. What did I do with the red brush? Did I get it dirty? I'll bet I did. Darn it. Oh well. We'll make another red brush. Okay, now we right in here we have a poinsettia. Is it poinsettia or poinsettia? Some people say the one, some others, some say the other. <laughs> Love that bright red, don't you? A little bit of dark. I have just enough green on the canvas that I don't have to gray underneath here, that I don't have to gray my red. Um, because as I'm adding the red to it, it's graying itself because of the green underneath it, of which is, is quite nice. I don't want, no, I don't, I wanna make sure that that one does not be pointing, is not pointing out of the canvas. Don't you point out of the canvas, you little stinker. There you go. Okay. Now, on the inside, I'm going to take my trusty wipeout tool. Oh, there's my red brush. I just found it. I had my finger underneath me, underneath my palette. Well, that was a good place for it. <laughs> okay, now we're going to put a little green, dark green in there. Okay. Some of the petals are there. And then we're going to put some lighter green and brighter. And he has his little his little yellow things, uh, little and brackets. I think that's what they're called, brackets. I'm so terrible with names of things. Anyway, but he has a few of these in there. Okay. That doesn't look too bad. Now he's got a couple of nice, deep um, leaves that are coming out. I have to admit and tell you the truth, he is a fake. He's the only fake poinsettia up here. So we mustn't make him, uh, give him too much credit because um, he is made out of silk instead of the real stuff. And then we'll put another little leaf back over in here. Now then, underneath here, we have all this dark stuff that is underneath the Okay. 
Okay. Now we'll pull, let's see, we'll put another leaf right back here. That should be dark instead of light. As soon as I did it, I knew it was wrong. See, so I just paint over it. You don't have to lament, just fix it. Nothing to it. Come back over this edge, lighten it up, and that puts it behind. There we go. Okay, now then we Time is passing so quickly, and I'm not nearly as far along as I had wanted to be. I want to make sure that I have time to show you how I am going to pull those flowers out. Because the next time we meet, it's no longer going to be Christmas time, and you're probably not going to really care. But that's okay. I'll show you anyway. <laughs> there we go. All right. And so we have some little things coming off of here. And now we're going to get a little bit lighter. Working fast and hard now. And we do have that little pine cone too that we want to get in there. Let me see here. I think he was sitting, oh, I think we'll put him right about there. Where's that wipe out tool? There it is. Wipe this out right here. And we'll put that little pine cone right there. Alrighty. He is a brownish color. And a little bit of blue in it. Okay. Alrighty. Well, we're down to 10 minutes. Let's see what happens in 10 minutes, okay? Let's see if we can go to town and make some, pull some magic together here. Okay, now on the little pine cone, he does have some little, whoops, he's not bright enough. Come on, little fella. Well, I don't know what that looks like. I don't think it looks like a pine cone, but that's something I can fix next time. He doesn't look like a pine cone too much. He looks like a some kind of a strange <laughs> fall flower that got dropped in there. We'll just come in here and make him a little bit less distinguishable. All right. Okay, now I want to um, make some petals on that poinsettia. poinsettia. I'm going to have one coming right here. I'm going to have another one coming 
right in here. Mm-hmm. This is the fun part. some over here. Remember I told you this is where my focal area is going to be? This is where the thickest paint is. Now the paint right now is so thick on here that it will take a year to dry. Isn't that cool? So next year, at this time, I'll be able to varnish and paint this, uh, uh, varnish and frame this painting, and it will be finally ready. Isn't that something? But red is the slowest drying color that there is. And so that's, that's why it'll take that long because I'm really putting it on luscious and thick. I mean, it's yummy, just absolutely yummy. That's the way we like it. Some little petals here. Little petal here. And something in here. Okay, should be a little darker right over here because this is a little behind. There we go, and that's what, that should be a little bit darker. Okay, I think we'll um, put a little bright on this guy here, kind of like so that we can equal, equal even it out a little bit, e make it a little more equal. Okay, and then we're going to, um, I want some of this to be, Oh, goodness, now we're down to five minutes. Boy, kids, I don't know. They really work me here in the station. There we go. There, I want that one to be, I want that one to be just a little bit like it's, like it's turning. There. This here, we need this to be coming out a little bit more. There. Okay, now right up in here, um, we need to put some, of the brackets. We're doing that pretty heavily because that is the, the focal area. Maybe I can, you know what? I don't like that table. 
stopping right there. Do you? I don't. Let's just let's just take that table on off right over here. Let's just take that on off. Yeah, I don't like that. There. There, that looks better. And let's just soften this in a little bit and back in here. Make a little shadow. Make it not be so stiff. There we go. Yeah. A little color back in here, a little color on there. There. And then we'll make this a little bit darker right here. Just a little darker right in there. And a little darker down in here. And then we'll come with our lighter brush and we'll come back and do some of these little light guys here to kind of poof it up a little bit. There we go. Okay. Loose and soft, loosey goosey, soft, but very much in season. And as you're out choosing your your poinsettia for the your Christmas decorations, don't forget the legend. Pick out a pretty one for the Christ child. I don't like that turn right there. I gotta change that. There we go. You know what, I could just keep fussing and fussing and fussing with this. And sometimes if you fuss too much, it doesn't make it any better. Um, so I have a couple minutes left here. I'm gonna come in here and put a little green and separate that a little bit. Maybe I'll put a little green up in there. There we go. And I'll probably be signing my name over here somewhere in red. And it doesn't look too much like this, but what the heck, I like it. And I hope you like it too. <laughs> Once again, this is Kitty Lynn Klish with Painting Journeys. And our journey today has been across the blank canvas, bringing poinsettias, a still life of poinsettias to life. So I, I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye for now.